<clears throat> okay, so let's start. Hola. How are you guys doing? Are you uh, uh, a little bit uh, a little bit hungover? <laughs> that was last night. I, I didn't make it. Yeah, uh, I, I heard there were free drinks and stuff. That was cool. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about UI animation. Uh, yeah, and uh, because UI animation is so hot, right? It's hot topic. Just like uh, I chose it because I, I, I want to be trendy. Uh, but not just UI animation, we're actually uh, talking about good to great UI animation. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, it's, another, it, it's clickbaity uh, title, right? Uh, that's what I went for. Uh, and we're going to actually have at the end just like practical tips to improve your micro interactions. See, all just like key keywords that I'm using on my titles here. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get animated, okay? It's a pun. It's intended there. Uh, so today's menu, we're going to be uh, talking about me a lot. It's <laughs> just me. Uh, we only have like uh, 25 minutes, so I'll probably want to be as fast as possible. That's why I'm going to be like this. Uh, we're going to be, uh, be talking about just my ideas of why animation, why it's important, uh, uh, some basic properties of uh, how you, the things that you can edit when you uh, create uh, UI animations. Uh, some animation tools, too, UI animation tools, and some practical tips at the end. So let's, uh, our goal at the end is probably uh, make it feel obvious and, and just like rolling your eyes. Uh, but in, in a way, it's, it's good, right? Because uh, if it is obvious, then it's, uh, it, it just it, it makes sense, right? It's uh, when you don't have to think about it, it stuff just happens. So hopefully, we get to uh, some principles behind to get to that place. Uh, some of the sources of what I'm talking about was uh, it's, uh, just like stuff from smarter people than me, uh, from IBM and animation design and also Google Material Motion. Uh, a lot of this stuff is also coming from, inspired by that. Uh, and also, yeah, my name is, uh, mi nombre es Pablo Stanley. I, I, I didn't know there was going to be an introduction, so yeah, I also just like, I'm going to talk about myself a little bit. I soy un diseñador, that means designer. So uh, everybody with me, say it, diseñador. Diseñador. That's, uh, that's a fancy uh, way of saying designer. Now you can, and it has the ñ from español. Uh, so uh, <laughs> it, it, it can, it's going to turn into a Spanish class here. If, if you don't learn anything about your animation, at least you, you learn that. Uh, so I, I do a lot of illustrations. Uh, that's one of the things that I just love doing. I, I, I love illustrations so much that I even uh, turn a, a library of, of, of illustrations, which is probably the most boring way to create illustrations, just like with uh, little elements and then suddenly the uh, illustrations appear. Uh, I, I also made one uh, for our future overlords, uh, the <laughs> robots. Uh, I made one that's just like the same concept, just like a, a lot of uh, like Legos, you know, you form them uh, together. Uh, I do a lot of artsy fartsy stuff too. I just like paint, and, uh, and if, if you can see, I have kind of a thing. I have a zombie face. I, I don't know, like back then, uh, illustrations and everything was related to. And I also write comics. Uh, I do have a comic series called The Design Team. So if you want to check it out, it's uh, it's about a design team working at a startup in Silicon Valley, and it talks a bit about actually my experiences when I moved here, uh, when I moved from a graphic design uh, background into uh, a startup in Silicon Valley, and, and then suddenly uh, working as a UX designer and not knowing what the hell was that. Uh, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out, uh, and, and yeah, it, it talks a little bit about that, and just like. Just a demo of, of one of those uh, comics. Uh, I'm going to act it. And then the product manager said, let's just use this design I made in PowerPoint. <laughs> no! It's uh, design horror stories, everyone, design team. <laughs> so, oh yeah, and by the way, I also do uh, UI and UX design. Probably that's why you're here, uh, not to uh, read my comics. Uh, so, uh, so uh, uh, yeah, enough about me. That's, that's it, that was it, quickly. Now let's uh, talk about UI animation. 
And, and, and before we actually get into the tips and, and, and all those uh, really specific things, let's actually talk about why, and probably even uh, some principles that can guide us. And the principles are, uh, uh, one, one way that I, I think of UI animation, I think of it as, a, uh, as the body language of a product. And it's like a two-way conversation. And like, what I mean is that uh, probably, again, this is a metaphor, it's probably not the best, but uh, I like to think of it that way, where it's like probably this is my UI, how I look. And uh, what I'm saying, my thoughts, my interactions, that's, uh, that's probably the UX, the experience, the part of it, the interaction. And then uh, just like how I actually move and, and, and how I express myself, that's the UI animation in and, 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 and a, and a person. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. And some principles. Uh, and these are principles that I just uh, put together. Uh, that probably is, uh, is going to be something that you, your team, your company uh, uh, puts together about like how are we going to uh, UI, uh, use UI animation. But I think uh, this is a, a good way to start. It's uh, above all, it starts by being functional. It feels natural and it can add a little bit of character. Uh, some people say delight. Uh, so it's functional. And whew, we don't see the, the shadows there, but. Uh, there are some shadows there. Uh, 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 above all, it just like shows hierarchy between elements and the actions that are available, what, what is happening, and what will happen if an action is taken. It gives you a, a little bit of visual feedback. Uh, and I love this example. It's actually from uh, the new uh, motion uh, design from Material. Uh, and it's, it's just like we're, we're used to it. There's no error message. There's nothing telling you like, oh, wrong password. Well, you, you did it wrong. It's just like a little bit of animation that is telling you and you exactly know what, what happened. It also tells you when you're right. It's just like a, a tiny little thing uh, that tells you a ton of things, right? It's, it, it goes back to the uh, uh, body language. It's just like uh, if, I, if I weren't able to s tell you, hey, you did something wrong, I would be like, you know? It's, it's something like that. And, then uh, the next thing uh, that I see is that it feels natural. And where, uh, where I go with this is that uh, the qualities of it, it's just like it feels like it's, it's tactile, that it, re it responds to your, uh, to, to your fingers, to your, uh, uh, it, and it also it's choreographed and it, and it feels graceful. And it uses uh, forces of the real world, like it's something that just makes sense, that, uh, uh, that you, uh, elements act as you expect them to act, because we are used to, if I were to throw this, it will fall down. It, will, it wouldn't just start flying. Uh, probably you can use those uh, kind of uh, 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 thinking uh, when you're creating UI animation. It's something that just makes sense. Uh, and also can add character. Uh, this is uh, from, from designing code. Uh, this is just a, a little bit of a, a parallax and, and a little bit of a, a just a tiny effect down there that it, it gives you a little bit of hint of uh, that, that something is different. And usually uh, adding a little bit of character and uh, delight, it's, it's a little bit tricky because it can be subjective. Uh, but it, it can celebrate uh, moment, moments of, uh, of the user journey, uh, something that they do and they, they tell you, hey, uh, everything is good, hey, let's go to the next thing. Uh, and expresses also a brand's personality and style. So, what can be improved with animation? And I think uh, one of the things is just, first thing, is visual feedback. It can show orientation, tell you where to go. It can focus your attention, uh, uh, what is necessary, what's, what's, the, uh, what's the next step, for example. It can get, give you a, a sense of cause and effect and express like I was saying, a brand's personality. So uh, let's go to uh, Gibbs feedback. It, here, I, I don't know if uh, who, for those that uh, use iOS uh, or an iPhone, it's just like a lot of things here happen that it just tells you what's going on. You bought it, uh, and then it's downloading, and then it's telling you like, hey, double click to pay. Uh, it, it's just like little elements that it's not, uh, they're not too obtrusive, uh, but uh, just little things that are telling you and directing you where to go. Uh, it also shows orientation, uh, what is next, what, what you should be doing. Uh, it kind of educates you on, on the next thing. Uh, it tells you what's next, where to go, and also focus your attention. It can remove unnecessary elements uh, and just like direct you to the next thing. 
it's, uh, uh, it, it moves to the right place, probably removes the clutter, and then it just like zoom in into something, like uh, this example from Google Maps. Uh, it also can tell you a uh, cost and effect when you, uh, something that you probably expect in the real world. Uh, you move something and you expect it to act in a certain way. It can also educate you and telling you how things are going to behave when you interact with them. So uh, just like the real world. And again, it can express a brand's personality. You can use it also for, uh, for those little uh, uh, moments of delight. And it can also be used, uh, I don't know if uh, you've seen this, but uh, uh, also make some error states feel less like errors and something that you, hey, everything's okay, just like go back. Uh, it, it makes your product in a little bit uh, feel alive. And, 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 and it goes back to having that conversation, uh, that conversation where your product is not just the product, but also the people behind it, uh, people that are making it, having that conversation with the user. So, okay. Questions? No, I, I don't think I can do questions. So tools, there are a lot of tools out there to create uh, UI uh, interactions. I'm going to list a lot of them, <laughs> and I divide them in, in three types of tools. Uh, the animation tools are purely for animation, uh, uh, for prototyping, for creating interactions where you can actually uh, put it on a phone, put it on a website, and actually click through a flow. Uh, and also implementation, like actually use the uh, code or uh, different tools that allow you to put it out there and, not, and it's not just a prototype, but it's actually something that the user is going to be, at the end, be using. Uh, so let's start with animation, just like uh, the tools that are purely for animation, but can be kind of like hacked to be used for uh, UI animation. Uh, uh, probably the most obvious, the, the, the king of all the uh, animation tools is probably After Effects. And, 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 and it's great because you can use it, it, it can be used for anything uh, that it's related to animation, it, including UI. Uh, all of these uh, tools, by the way, that they don't allow you to actually interact with them. It's just, it creates like a video. You know? It's just like it goes through one state, next state, next state. It's very linear. Uh, Keynote is another one. Uh, I don't know if you, <laughs> you know uh, about Magic Move. Magic Move is so cool. It's just like, it, it, it really, does work like magic. So I, I recommend uh, checking it out for also for your, your animation if you want to create something simple. Uh, and also uh, Flash, remember Flash? Uh, now it's called Animate. Uh, I, I haven't used it in a long time, but uh, back in the day, that was, oh man, that was a tool. Uh, back in, damn, that was a long time ago, I'm old. Uh, so, next, yeah, all the millennials, what, Flash, what is that? Uh, <laughs> uh, prototyping. So for prototyping, these are the tools before, like I was telling you, it's just like very linear. It's just like one step, one state, next state, next state. Uh, for prototyping, I allow you to actually take different uh, uh, courses, to take different flows, uh, because the user can actually interact with these things. And uh, so for prototyping, I see all these, and I'm pretty sure I'm missing some of them, uh, but there's principles, Flinto, there's Framer, Origami, uh, ProPy, Kite, in studio. So a disclaimer, uh, I, I actually just joined uh, a studio, uh, Envision Studio, so, uh, so, there's going to, so I'm going to be a little bit biased towards the studio. Uh, but yeah, I just joined that team, but I, I will tell you why I think I'm, uh, 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 it's, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, and I actually made this graphic to help you, because there are so many tools, right? Which one should I take? Uh, which one should I be using? And I put them in the level of how difficult it is to create a prototype, not just to learn it, but to actually create something. You already know the tool. Let's say that you already know how to use the tool. Even when you already know how to use the tool, there's still a, 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 a starting process to get you to that place where you just make a button do something, you know? And, and I think the uh, uh, now uh, the Sketch, uh, uh, XD, and Figma, they allow you to uh, create prototypes inside their uh, tools, but they're not that awesome. So here's like how difficult it is, and then over here, how awesome your uh, prototype can be. Yeah, and, and when I mean, uh, what I mean with awesome is just like how much control they give you, a granular control of the elements that you can move around in your prototypes. So uh, over here, those things in, in the bottom left, they give you access to the screens. Uh, you can move the screens, and then you just connect them and then put them together, which is sometimes all you need, by the way. 
so they allow you to do that, but they don't give you that granular control where you want to things to move and expand and just like uh, move uh, in a gracious way. Uh, then we move a little bit up and uh, then we have uh, prototyping tools that are specific prototyping tools that connect to those tools and then uh, you can create a little bit more, uh, a little bit more awesome uh, stuff. And then pr probably right there in the middle that they have a little bit difficult to, to get started, our principle in Flinto, uh, but those allow you to actually move every element, you have access to everything, everything can be uh, moved and, and everything can be just uh, transformed. And then we get, oh man, okay, those are really light, but uh, here's Protopy, Kai, Kai Topo, Composer, and then Framer and Origami. Those, those two are like really hard to use, but they give you a lot of control on the actual phone, like on the camera, they give you uh, control to the, uh, what do you call it when you move it? I don't know. Motion sensor, that thing. So they, they allow you to actually create more realistic prototypes if you need those things. But most of the apps don't really need you to use those things. So, but if you need them, probably you need to uh, uh, get one of those uh, prototyping tools. Uh, and then over here, I think uh, I'll tell you that I was going to be biased. I, I see Studio is over here where it's pretty awesome, and, and I don't think it's that hard because it's actually the, the same tool that you're using for designing allows you to have all of that control. Uh, over here, we have other tools that allow you to have that control, but uh, they, they require you to use another design tool. So it's almost like you use the design tool and then put it on the, that prototyping tool and then you create your prototype, but then they're disconnected. Your prototype is one file and your design is another file. So here, uh, I think uh, Studio, the, the, the advantage that it has is that it's all living in the same e ecosystem. So again, Promo, self-promo, this is uh, just how uh, Studio works. Uh, it, everything right there, that was my design. That was the design, and then the design actually can use it to uh, create uh, an actual uh, animation right there, super easy. Uh, also, uh, you, can, you have the control of a timeline, uh, and this is, again, this is in the same tool that you're using for designing every screen. You go to an, interaction designer where you can just like control everything, every element. And you can even, <laughs> you can even hack it. I, this is something that I, that I do. I, I always try to uh, use UI interaction tools to see if I can make animations, which is the other way around. Usually you hack animation tools to make UI interactions. I, I want to do the other way around where I want to uh, uh, hack interaction tools to create animations. And I think this was done in Studio 2. I just used the light version. That's why it looks uh, light. Uh, yeah. So uh, what you want with these kind of uh, tools is you want to be able to control gestures, uh, be able to control your uh, interactions with gestures, uh, with uh, scrolling where you have different uh, specific elements that scroll and some elements don't, uh, and uh, probably even control of data, uh, and also control of other elements that just like move around. There you go. Okay, so those were prototyping tools, but there's also implementation tools that you can use for uh, UI animation uh, as a designer. And I think uh, there's uh, After Effects plus, plus uh, plugins. Uh, you can use uh, Google's Motion Library. Uh, CSS and uh, Animation Libraries, uh, Swift for iOS. If you actually want to get into the code, you can do it on JavaScript. And then one that I really like is called Webflow because this one is it, it's kind of a, it, it's a tool for designing a, a website, but it also, it gives you all the control and, 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 and that, what you create there, it's actually going to be what you can implement. Uh, so I, I, I would recommend you to check it out if you are into actually implementing stuff and not just iterating. And uh, another thing, the ultimate implementation combo, if you are working on mobile, I recommend you uh, working on After Effects, then uh, using a plugin called Body Moving, and then with Body Moving, using, hold on. These two are only, if you're only doing web, this is all you need. But if you want to do it on, on React Native, then you need another one uh, that converts your Body Moving uh, uh, JSON file into uh, something that can be used in React, which is pretty dope. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so yeah, back to the, uh, the, did I repeat? Oh man, 
Hold on. No, those were supposed to be uh, skipped. I'm sorry. How do I move my mouse? Da, 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 da. Okay, there you go. Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about the actual properties that you can uh, uh, move uh, or you can uh, transform when you are uh, creating UI animations. And, and you can transform anything when you're using these kind of uh, uh, tools. Uh, but let's see which ones you want to uh, uh, transform and what do they mean. So uh, probably you, want, you can change the easing, you can change the position, the scale, all these things that we're used to changing when we are editing a design. Uh, but you can also create a, a choreography, a relationships, an overlay, and also add a parallax and zoom. So easing. So easing is uh, probably one of the most basic tools, but it's really important to know uh, at, at least, again, the basics of it. And easing allows you to uh, uh, add acceleration and deceleration so that animations don't appear too mechanical. Uh, it, and remember I was telling you that it, it feels natural? It's just uh, when you are... For example, like if I were to walk over here, I don't just start like walking full speed and then stop. You know, it, that that would be you will be thinking like, oh man, what's going on? Uh, you usually just start accelerating, pick up speed, and then you slow down when you uh, arrive to your place, right? Uh, you expect elements on a screen to uh, act, behave that way too. So that's what easing comes uh, really handy. Let me uh, show you uh, some basic types of easing. Uh, ease in, ease out, in and out, spring, linear. All these, by the way, are taking one second to get to the other place. Uh, they just feel, some of them feel a little bit slower, some of them feel a little bit faster, but to get to the last pixel, all of them take one, or is it two? Yeah, one second. So let's start actually seeing each example. The first one is uh, linear, and it's kind of poopy. It just, uh, it just like moves out of nowhere. And can you see like it, 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 it doesn't feel natural. It's just like it feels like, like, like a robot, how they will move. Uh, so you want to avoid that. Sorry, let me go back. You want to avoid that unless you really need it. Uh, when do you need linear animation is when uh, something is in the loop, for example. It's in a loop and it's just like, for example, something that is rotating and you just want to keep it at the same speed always, then you use a linear animation or something that is just like always supposed to be at the same speed and you don't see when it's uh, entering the screen or exiting the screen, you just like always see it at the same speed, for example. Like those backgrounds back in the Flintstones uh, 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 cartoons, you will see like the backgrounds always moving at the same speed and just like endless backgrounds. I'm too old, I'm talking about the Flintstones, wow. <laughs> okay, That's, they, they, they use uh, linear animations for those. Uh, so ease, okay. So ease in. When do you use ease in? Ease in is uh, at the end of the, uh, sorry, at the beginning of the animation. It starts a little bit slower. So it's like me. I start walking, and I start a little bit slow, and then I pick up speed. That's what you use ease in, and you use it ease in without the ease out when you have an element that is exiting the screen. So over here, are the pizza is outside the screen. The user cannot see it, so there's no need to ease it out at the end. Now, the opposite comes with ease out. It's when, you, when an element is entering the screen. You want the element to grace, graciously or gracefully, with grace, uh, enter the screen and then fall into place. It's the opposite of what I was uh, doing before. Let's say that I, it, it doesn't matter how the animation starts. It starts really fast over there, but it doesn't matter because the, it's not inside the screen. So you can just use ease out. Now, when an element is, is always visible inside the screen, then the basic thing that you want to do is uh, ease in and out. Because again, it's the user is always looking at it, so you want the, for it to start accelerating and then decelerating. That's why the banana does that. Now, spring, if you want to get really fancy, you can start doing, uh, I don't know, bouncy stuff. I, I, I would say, like, do it carefully. Don't make every, I, I know, once you start using a, a, an animation, a, animation tool that allows you to do all this stuff, you will want to everything. Let's make it bouncy in spring. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it, it, it's like having Photoshop for the first time. You apply lens flare to everything. Oh my God, look at all these shadows. Uh, 
So it, it will happen the same when you get a new tool. You know, you want to ex explore everything. Uh, do it, and then tone it down a little bit, okay? Uh, so go back to the same screen. Now we understand what's going on here. He's in, he's out, in and out. They're all taking the same amount of time. They just arrive. Uh, they, some of them start a little bit slower. Some of them arrive a little bit slower. Some of them just like. <whistles> okay, some properties that you can change. Uh, the properties are, for example, the position of something. It tells you the direction in, where, in which the elements are going to uh, travel. It gives you uh, an orientation. It, it, it tells you context. Where are you going? For example, this uh, little plane. It just moves. And also scale. It just makes an object appear closer or further away. It just like helps you uh, focus also on what is important and what is uh, in a state is important and then when it stops being important and something else replaces the importance of it or in the hierarchy. So for example here, love is important. Uh, rotation, rotation, don't, don't rotate everything on your <laughs> animation too because then uh, you uh, use rotation uh, very uh, scarcely, is that how you say it? Scarce, in a scarce way? Uh, because it, it can create a, a, an effect on the, on the user that is, you don't want them to, to, to have. Uh, moving around an axis uh, provides cues of something that is, usually you want to use it for something that is like going on, something that is like, hey, we're working on it. And that's why I think uh, it's being used a lot on like loading animations. Uh, opacity, this is probably the, mo the easiest way to just like go from one state to another, just like uh, an opacity changes. So it goes from the most basic 0% to 100%, for example. So an element that wasn't there suddenly appears. But this opacity can also be changed where uh, you actually crossfade elements. One is 100%, and then there's another one here that's a 0%, and then one changes to zero, and then the other one changes to 100%. And that change, it feels really uh, uh, smooth uh, when you do it right. And, uh, and it's a very uh, basic, easy way to just uh, create your animation. Uh, overlay, it just uh, gives you an idea that uh, there's a, a third dimension there. Uh, it can give uh, the location of a 2D object, uh, it gives a little bit of depth when you have an element that is over another element and then probably it moves and then it shows something that is behind. Uh, also, <clears throat> uh, choreography, and this, uh, this uh, tells you when elements are appearing, and, and again, they don't all just appear at the same time. You can uh, add a little bit of, uh, uh, make them appear in a sequence, so it just like feels more clear and smooth, and, and again, natural. And <laughs> parallax, if you want to uh, be super fancy, uh, this is uh, when, like, like that example that we're looking at uh, from uh, designing, uh, designing code, it, it used, a, used a little bit of parallax that gives you the idea of depth that in a 2D screen where uh, things that are a little bit further away from you, uh, well, appear to be further away, move a little bit uh, slower, and things that are supposed to be closer to you uh, and uh, move way faster. So for example here, the mountains in the back you see them just move just a little bit, and then there are different uh, uh, layers that move at different speeds, and then it creates that effect of parallax. And hierarchy, hierarchy motion shows how elements are related, and also gives importance and focus to other elements. The not so basics, I'm not going to talk about these, uh, but just like take a photo and then you go <laughs> research this, uh, uh, about personality, uh, timing and spacing, and storytelling. These are the, if you really are into this and you want to, I'm, I want to be a UI animator, you're going to get into this kind of stuff too. So uh, the no-nos, <laughs> uh, things you please don't, don't try to be just using animation just to be flashy. Don't make it expensive. Expensive on the user and on your, on your team too that is, that is making this. And it's like sometimes you create an animation that is so crazy that it's going to probably take a week just to make that specific animation that is probably not that important. Uh, and also it can be expensive on the user side because it can create some, a little bit of lag, it can create a, it can give uh, on the uh, performance of the device, it can be bad. So don't make it too complicated and don't forget that there should be an intention for everything you do. 
And okay, so practical tips. At the end. Oh no, I think we're good. Practical tips, really quickly. Uh, just now that we know how elements are connect, can, can you can connect them and how uh, the principles that you can follow. Uh, you can go from uh, good animation to great animation uh, by connecting shared elements. Just identifying the elements that are from one state to another are the same and then connecting them. For example, on the left here, we have you tap on something and then another screen appears, which is good. It, it, it feels good, right? Uh, but when an element actually that you tap on it and then reacts to your interaction, to your gesture, and actually grows the element that you just touched, and then they fall into a different place, they change their position, then it feels more natural. Uh, the same, it goes uh, when, I think I was uh, already talking about this, the cascading effect, but a good animation just changes the position and passing the material when it enters the screen. You just touch it and then element appears, there's a passing and there's movement. But when you actually uh, animate each element really quickly, uh, but it feels more natural when everything just uh, follows a, a little bit of choreograph. And uh, so here, for example, there's an, uh, an example of a menu. Uh, a menu or something contextual, you act on it, and then something else appears. Usually on, on the world, nothing will just appear out of nowhere. Uh, I'm seeing a red light. I don't know if I should be out of here now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that they're zero, and I'm probably, oh man, I'm probably over time. Okay, uh, okay, yes, dialogues appear in context. And also, you can use animation to bring attention to something that is important. Yeah, for example, on the left, that's a good, uh, there's no animation, but it, it's a good design that it's just telling you, hey, something is using a Nikon, is using a, a specific style that is different from everything else, it's floating. So it, it, it brings that focus to the user. But what if you could do uh, something a little bit more? Uh, and don't overdo this because you don't want everything to bring your attention. Look at me, because then, uh, well, your user will get annoyed. And also, if everything, if everything is important, then nothing is important, right? Uh, and uh, good animation is smooth and show elements in context. Uh, it's pretty similar to what I was uh, saying before. But here, the elements actually push all our elements out of the way. Uh, instead of just appearing on top. Uh, and here we have, a, this is just another tip, just to use the same elements to give you a little bit of feedback. Uh, instead of a new element appearing, uh, probably there's, a, there's an opportunity to use that same element that you had an interaction with to give you, a hey, something is loading, or a hey, uh, give me a little bit of time. And good animation phase the content in and out from one state to another, and a great animation shows continuity in a transition by making the content move between uh, states. So over here, it's just doing a transition, opacity, it's good. But a great one, it's like, it feels like, oh, the element is also there, it's always there. You move it, and then it appears. It's not just appears out of nowhere. And that's it, my friends. Thank you. To recap, talk about me. <laughs> Why animation? Hopefully, you got a little bit of that. <laughs> Basic properties, you animation tools, practical tips, and hopefully by by now this all this feels more obvious. When you see it, when you open an app, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I can do that. I can use one of those tools to to recreate it. And yeah. I hope you are ready to make everything move. <laughs> don't overdo it again. Don't apply a spring to everything. Uh, and just animate responsibly. And hold on, don't go. Let me take a, a, a selfie. This is super cool, just uh, all of you. Let me see if I can do this. Okay, it, just pretend that you're happy, okay? Just. <laughs> hey, what's up? Can you see yourselves? One, two, and. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Muchas gracias.